Holy. Check that out. That's a beauty. What is it? It's a tag. No, I've never seen it. This is a lottery lobster. I've never actually seen one myself. This is pretty crazy. And this lobster could be worth more than the rest of the lobsters that we catch on this whole trip. It could be worth up to $4,500. We're going to call the phone number later and get some information on it and get our name in the lottery. Uh, but first, let's go back to the beginning and go through the rest of the traps with you. All right, so today's going to be a bit different than our typical day on the water. Typically, we only go out and haul 400. Today, we're going out to try to haul all 800 of them. Yeah. So the challenge with today is the weather window. You can see we got a small weather window from about noontime today till about daylight tomorrow morning is good weather. And usually we'll go out and haul 400 traps each day, but in the winter we get long stretches of bad weather. In between those long stretches of bad weather, we'll get little windows. That's what we have here. So we gotta try to go out and haul all 800 of the traps in this small weather window, which is gonna be a bit of a challenge. We have to do this a few times a year, not super common, but when we do, it, it does suck. It's a lot of work to go through 800 traps all in one shot. It's gonna take us most of the night to do it. So we're hauling the traps up, five traps to a time. We got buoys marking them. We'll sort through them, see if we catch anything cool. We'll share anything with you as we catch it. Here comes the first one. Five down, 795 to go. Good try. We have to open this up for me. We got a huge lobster stuck in the trap. He's got his claw stuck in the hoop. The hoops are made out of stainless steel. And he's somehow got his whole body through the hoop, but he can't get his claw through. Was a minute doing it. Ah, the size of that thing. Wow. That is a monster lobster. One of the biggest ones we've ever caught. Look at the size of his claw. Probably pushing a hundred years old. Look at the old man. He's got some barnacles growing on him. He's in pretty hard shape. Once they get this old, he hasn't shed for a long time. Look, he's missing his thumb. He's missing most of his teeth on his claw. You see how black his claws are. He's due to shed. He's got some shell disease. He needs to shed soon if he's going to live any longer. Once they get this age, this is what ends up killing them. They get stuck inside their shell and they don't have enough energy to shed. So hopefully the old man will shed soon and he'll live a lot longer. These are the best ones at breeding the females. Keep them in the ocean. Anything over five inches is protected. We're going to send him home. I don't know if the old man will take a snack, he's old and stubborn, but we're going to try. Oh, there he goes. For a comparison, there's a little baby, a little tiny one. It's funny, stuff like this we consider normal. It's ow, ow. They're little, but they can bite. <laughs> yeah, the little ones can actually bite pretty hard. And it's hard for us to really understand what you guys might find interesting, but these little lobsters, people actually do find interesting because while we see them all the time and they seem normal to us, they never make it to land, so nobody on land ever really sees a small lobster. But Basically, just a little crawdad. He keeps there. biting me. Ow! Hey, got a football. We got one with no claws. I think he's oversized. He's pretty close. Well, he's way oversized. Scratch that. Five inches. He's five and a half inches. That is massive. Blue, 42. What? This is a lottery lobster. I've never actually seen one myself. This is pretty crazy. They got numbers, information on it, a phone number you can call. The state of Maine does it to track them. And this lobster could be worth more than 
the rest of the lobsters that we catch on this whole trip, it could be worth up to $4,500. So this lobster's actually a female and she's got no notch. She looks like a keeper. I'm surprised that they tagged the keeper lobster. I mean, we can keep it, but since it's already tagged, I think we're gonna give it a notch. We'll let it go. That way it stays in the ocean. We can get more information on it down the road from other fishermen that catch her. If we keep her now, that'll ruin the fun of the experiment. We got the phone number written down, we're gonna call it later. We're gonna take advantage of the daylight while we got it and get back to work. Of course, before we let her go, we're gonna give her a snack. Nice scalping. Funny looking fish. Sometimes they'll come in yellow, orange, and polka dots. This one's kind of boring. Hey, that's Sorry, rude. I didn't mean that. That means the season is over. Holy! Look at that beauty. So the lobsters actually shed their shell and sometimes they'll lay weird. I don't even know what this, I don't think that's what happened to this one. Sometimes that while they're jelly, they'll lay weird on bottom and they'll harden up in a weird shape. But this one looks like it's actually deformed. It's growing a side claw right here. Pretty cool. Before the end of this trip, we might possibly be able to do 100 V notches in this one trip. We've done 21 or two so far. Chat's helping us keep track of how many we're doing. Every time we do one, you guys gotta spam the hearts. All right, we got one full of eggs. She's already got a notch and she's got some barnacles growing right on her claws. We're gonna do her a favor, clean the barnacles off. They can grow and kind of get out of control and get bigger as they get bigger. They'll grow into her knuckles. There, she's good to go. A piece of that just went in my eye. There she goes. Seven sixty. That's one hundred and twenty thousand likes. Big old Good job. I don't know if it's a keeper or not. We gotta check it. It looks like it. It's close. Oh, too big. Oversized male. One million likes, let's go! <laughs> That's a huge horny one. <laughs> they do they they do actually vibrate. He's not joking. I can feel him vibrating in my hand. I don't know what the I don't know why they do that. I don't know if it puts off a sound underwater or what. These things are full of fun. You gotta be careful when you hold on to them. If you're new and you're wondering what this V-notch is, we put this V-notch in the lobsters that have eggs on them. And the V-notch signifies that these females are capable of breeding. We want to keep track of the females that can breed because not all of them can. Like on a farm, we don't want to harvest the breeders. This is a way of keeping track of them. Once they have this notch, they can no longer be kept. They're protected. They're highly illegal to keep. And I think you. we gave one a piece of heron one time when we let it go. And now every time we let one go, if we don't give it a snack, we get yelled at in the comments. So she's getting the snack. That's 28. All right, got it. 28 eggers. So the lobster fishery in Maine is actually open year round. We can fish 12 months out of the year. And that's, that's very nice for a lot of reasons. But the main reason is safety. We're not forced to go out in weather we don't want to go out in. Putting seasons on fisheries make it dangerous because it forces fishermen to go out in weather that they don't want to go out in. So if we know that we can only go for two months out of the year, then we have to go. And we're going out in weather and we're doing things that we'd rather not do. Where we're open year round, we get to pick our weather windows, we get to pick our days, and we get to go when we want, which is awesome. And we're able to come out on evenings like this and haul when the weather is good and the conditions are ideal. So far, so good. Not too tired yet. Things are going smooth. We're gonna get back to work.
Pretty cool scalping. We get these guys sometimes, they're all yellow. They're really cool. This is just a normal one. I know which one that toilet was right down there. <laughs> well, there goes you. Well, there goes the sun. We just lost it. The rest of them are going to be in darkness. It's almost supper time. We're going to take a break here at some point and have some food. And then we're going to get back to it. The darkness is much trickier to haul traps in, trying to find the buoys. It's not as smooth. Uh, but the goal is to get the rest of the trap hauled before daylight because at daylight the wind is supposed to pick back up and blow hard. Appreciate it. And then the love. So the plan for dinner is actually to throw some of these claws in the tank of hot water. Cooking them might be a bit of a challenge because they got to be cooked to perfection to pick them. If you cook them wrong, picking them is a nightmare. But we're going to throw them in there, give them, I don't know, an hour or two. Has a knot, so we gotta let her go. This one has eggs. I don't know if you can see it, it's getting kind of dark. She's full of eggs and she's got no knots. So we're gonna give her a knot. Oh, we got two of them actually out of that one. We gotta do both of them. We've V notched 35, so it's not looking like 100, maybe, unless the second half comes in strong. But it's definitely gonna be a solid 60 70, which is pretty good. Codfish! Little codfish. Beauty. Go quick. It's a big cunner right there. C U N N E R is the name of that fish. It's hard to pronounce it without sounding. <laughs> bad, but it's that's what it's called, the cunner. We see them occasionally. They're usually in around the rocks. That's 54. We're now into the dark segment of the hauling. This is the not so fun part. Trying to find the buoys are a struggle. Daytime is easy. You can just pour it up into a trap. Nighttime, you got to look for every single one of them. It's like hauling in the fog. Not is enjoyable. All right, so the plan for dinner is some crab claws. As fresh as they get, we're putting them in a bait bag, cooking them in our tank of hot water, our green hot water, pre-seasoned, with grass and slime. Actually, I think there's a piece of bait in there too that they dropped in earlier. So we've even got some herring, herring oil. Not sure how long they're gonna take to cook. The water's only about 170. So they're gonna be in there a while. Gonna try them later. Be our late night snack. Got a nice buck right there. Things are starting to get tedious. We're gonna take a break here in a minute. We're gonna try out the crab claws, see if they cooked up. This one's way oversized. We've got a couple left and we're gonna take a break. All right, so these babies have been marinating for about, I don't know what, an hour and a half, two hours? No idea if they're gonna be cooked right or not. Crab claws are a tough thing to cook. They look pretty good. Let's try one out. Some nice warm food. Man, that would be good right now. Oh man, look at that. Cooked to perfection. <laughs> That's actually the best crab claw I've ever eaten in my life. Here you go, Cody. It's actually Sweet delicious. Fish really pretty good. Nothing wrong with that. No. 
So we're taking a quick break here, warming up, regrouping, getting some food, and just realized we kind of lost track of time. We were going to call the number during our downtime, but it's now 9 p.m., so obviously nobody's going to answer the phone right now. But we did look it up online, and we found some interesting information. It's a tagging program done by the state of Maine. They tagged over 17,000 lobsters, approximately 1,500 recapture reports. They have a lottery system, like I was saying earlier. The last winner of the lottery was January 2nd, 2020, and they $4,500 in reward. So that's pretty cool. And that would be okay. I wouldn't complain if that lobster was worth $4,500. Unfortunately, like I said, we can't call them right now. So we're gonna finish this haul segment. We got, we got a couple hundred traps left to haul, and we'll have to call them later in the day tomorrow, once they're open. We'll be sure to keep you in the loop when we do. So we just got back from our little break. This one right here makes number 600. Things are starting to turn into a bit of a grind, but it'll all be worth it. Because once this weather window passes and we got nothing but wind, I'll feel good knowing they're all baited. We're done for a few days after this. Right, Cody? Cody thought it was a lot better idea this morning than he does right now. Little tiny eggers, about as small as we get that have eggs. Look at her, she's covered in barnacles too. Little barnacles, but they are getting out of control and they're growing right in the joints of her claws. Pretty soon she won't be able to bend her claws. There we go, she's all cleaned up. She had a good day at the claw spa. I'll tell my friends. Get up here. We've got another barnacle. Big one growing right on her back. She's also an egger. Hey, egger. Needs a no. She needs a knot. Of course, we got to get rid of that barnacle. There she goes. We're creeping up on 7.50, it's midnight, this is getting pretty old pretty quick, we've about had it, hope we'll make it to 800 and on, but we're trying, we're on the home stretch. Somewhere around 75. We were hoping to get to 100, but we're not quite going to make it. That's okay. Though. We are just about to 800. We got one buoy left. Woo! Okay. If you don't open your claws, you're not getting a snack. My patience is wearing thin. Real thin. Real thin. Right Let's go. Got time for this one. Come to the last one. There it is, right there. Woo! Never been so excited to see a buoy in my life. I'm still alive. I don't feel very alive, but I'm alive. Do you know how many jams are on that, Jacob? That's all right. Can you hear this yet, too? My lips are burning a little bit. They actually right. are. Just flick that off of there. Wow, my lips are burning. Just flick that <laughs> off of there. It's OK. A little horn dog and a little baby. The last one, there she is, right there. The last melon. All right. Well, there goes the last one we just finished up. Hopefully we won't be doing that again anytime soon. That's never fun. It's a lot to go through that many traps in one, one run. 400 traps is a day enough, 800 is too much. We're headed in now. We're gonna take care of the lobsters, fuel the boat up. And I'm going home to take a nap. And when I get up, we'll call that phone number on that tag and we'll figure out the story behind that lobster. We'll figure out where it came from. We'll figure out where it's been. We'll see you bright and early. All right, quick update on the tag lobster. I'm back home. I've tried to call the number on the tag. I've left a voicemail. I can't seem to reach them. Uh, I'm hoping they'll call me back. I'm sure they will at some point, given that it's the holidays. 
might be harder to get a hold of them. I'm sure after the holidays I'll hear back. I'm going to send them emails as well. Uh, I'm interested to find out the history behind this lobster. The whole point of this tagging program is to track how far they travel, how long it takes them to do so, and just try to learn about the migration patterns of lobsters. Uh, so that'll be pretty interesting to learn about. Uh, I was hoping to have that information for the end of this video, but unfortunately that's not going to happen. I want to wrap this video up here. But I'll be sure to give you updates in the future on this tagged lobster as I have them. In the beginning of the next video, whether I hear back from them or not, I'll definitely give you guys an update. So stick around. Thank you for watching all the way to the end of this one. I'll catch you in the next one.